When the Capitol was attacked, they knew it had all gone too far. Fox News hosts were texting with White House Chief of Staff, begging him to have Trump call the rioters off. Now, rarely does history allow you to see what people were thinking in real time, but these texts do, and one is especially revealing. This is hurting all of us. That's what Laura Ingram said. And the all of us there doesn't seem to mean all Americans. It means the right-wing water carriers for Trump. As these text messages rip the curtain back on the Trump Fox feedback loop. It shows that they thought of themselves as partisan political enablers first, not anything resembling journalists. And they knew it wasn't a mostly peaceful protest. But that shock of recognition only lasted a few minutes, because hours later they were back in hyperpartisan distortion land, spreading desperate deflections. And Fox News viewers were once again being played for fools. Take a listen. I have never seen Trump rally attendees wearing helmets, black helmets, brown helmets, black backpacks, the uniforms that you saw in some of these crowd shots. Um, have you ever seen them wearing, as, as Chris said, those knee pads and the, you know, all the pads on their elbows? I just, I mean, I've been to a lot of these rallies. I know you, you both have covered them. I've never seen that before, ever. Everyone knew going in today that this crowd was going to be massive. They knew there were hundreds of thousands of people that came to town. We also knew that there's always bad actors that will infiltrate large crowds. I don't care if they're radical left, radical right. I don't know who they are. They're not people I would support. So how are officials not prepared? We've got to answer that question. They knew this wasn't some false flag operation. They knew it wasn't Antifa or Black Lives Matter because they knew in real time that the Capitol was being attacked by Trump supporters. But their inability to tell the truth when the microphones were on allowed the big lie to metastasize. And so it's not surprising that last night, as Liz Cheney was reading the new evidence out loud, Fox was ignoring the whole thing, offering up this ironic instant classic of a banner at the bottom of the screen, talking about lawlessness. Because, of course, what's being revealed is just how lawless the Trumpublican Party really is. Beyond these texts, over the past few days, we've learned even more about how this attempt to disrupt, dislay, and overturn the election was being quarterbacked out of the White House. In the 9,000 pages of documents that Mark Meadows handed over to the committee before belatedly claiming executive privilege, we can see in their own words how close America came to having democracy dismantled. Less than a week after the election, there's an email showing efforts to pressure state legislators to appoint pro-Trump electors over the Biden electors chosen by the voters. And we've gotten some insight into Meadows' efforts to press federal agencies to investigate frankly insane election conspiracy theories involving foreign nations from Italy to China and claims of remote hacking with satellites and even thermostats. We've seen other step-by-step -step sedition memos from Trump lawyers and reports about an unhinged PowerPoint full of conspiracy theories whose author says he met with Meadows in the White House. Not only that, the chief of staff was communicating with members of Congress, trying to overturn the election, while also assuring at least one person that the National Guard would protect pro-Trump people on January 6th. This is the opposite of law and order. It's the most sickening example of putting partisanship over patriotism in our history. They were actively trying to overturn democracy just to stay in power. And the fact that so many of these apparatchiks were willingly duped by the cult-like big lie speaks to how pervasive it had become on right-wing talk TV. In those desperate texts, maybe Fox hosts realized that they'd helped create the conditions that led to the Capitol attack. And now they're responsible for perpetuating the big lie, which has allowed the leader of an attempted coup to aim for the presidency again. It's all evidence of how profiting off polarization can be deadly for our democracy. And that's your reality check.